I still get a lot of questions from people that seem confused why I use Emacs over Vim these days because of course I used to be a Vim user. I still use Vim occasionally. Sometimes I do content about Vim on the channel, but Emacs is kind of my editor of choice these days. Why is that? I think one of the biggest reasons why I choose Emacs over Vim is that Vim has to run in a terminal and terminal programs naturally have some limitations and for a text editor I would say there's serious limitations in running a terminal based text editor because if you spend a lot of time in a text editor so you're a programmer a developer a creative writer and you spend a ton of time using your text editor you know staring at that text all day right for hours on end you want the best possible experience as far as font rendering and colors and everything like that and there are limitations of course at the terminal that Emacs just doesn't have because Emacs is its own program it doesn't run in a terminal I mean you can run Emacs in a terminal if you have to but technically what most people run Emacs as is the GUI version the graphical version of Emacs and because of that the fonts just look beautiful I played around with some of my font settings this morning I spent a couple of hours kind of ricing my Emacs config and let me show you a little bit of what I played around with today so let me switch to my desktop so let me open up my config.org my uh, doom Emacs config right so this is my config.org and if I uh, zoom out you can see it's, it's going to be a rather lengthy org mode document right one of the things when I'm zoomed out that will be immediately noticeable to most viewers is the org headers right so this is the top level header this is org level one so I imagine we're outlining this is a single asterisk and then a header and then single asterisk header this is two asterisks then a header so this is a org level two and you can see I've got different font sizes right so one of the things you can't do in a terminal you can't have different font sizes everything has to be the exact same font size that's just a limitation of a terminal but in a GUI program of course you can have different font faces different font sizes and it really makes sense for these org level headers right typically your default fonts in Emacs are going to be a mono spaced font a fixed pitch font but there's no reason why you couldn't have a variable pitched font for the org headers <laughs> that's what I've done also we have different sizes this is 1.7 font size for org level 1 meaning it's 170 percent of your standard height for your fonts so and then you can see org level 2 so this would be two asterisks and it's slightly indented over this is org level 2 it's only 160 percent of the font size and you can see I have different colors top level header gets blue second level header gets purple and if I go down three so three asterisks there's three one two three four asterisks is four and if I keep going down you will see I've got a slightly smaller font size every time I go down the org levels let me get rid of what I had just done there now let me go back to the top here and since this is a, such a long config I'm gonna go ahead and fold this up a little bit and now I'm going to scroll down here to the header here that says org mode and let's just unfold that and then I have some subheaders here you can see org fonts this is what I played around with today so what I wanted is I wanted some interactive functions that would actually change the org levels as far as their colors depending on what color scheme I was using and I have 10 different color schemes that are part of DTOS so if I do uh, super PC I have a D menu script here where I have these 10 various color schemes and if I pick one for example if I picked solarized light and hit enter it will change to solarized light for X monad for X bar for conky which you can't see it's on a different monitor for trayer which is my system tray for alacrity which is my terminal it changes everything that needed to be changed except for doom emacs because doom emacs to change the color scheme it's an interactive thing so you have to do it yourself space ht will list all the themes that are available if i do a search for solarized light i can change the solarized light but here's the thing i want the org level headers to also change to solarized light appropriate colors so i define these new interactive functions you can see defund org dash colors dash doom dash one so that is changing 
to the Doom 1 color scheme for the org headers, but I created one for Dracula, Grubbox, Dark, Monica, yada, yada, yada. I have one down here for Solarized Dark, Solarized Light. Now watch what happens if I do Meta X and search for org colors, Solarized Light. Let me go back to where we have some headers so you can see the color change. So uh, right here, so I'm going to do Meta X and do org dash colors dash Solarized Light, and you can see the color changed because I had the appropriate color schemes, right? So that's what I spent this morning doing is really just creating, well, I already got the 10 color schemes. I just plugged in the appropriate values and created these 10 simple little interactive functions. Now let me get back to Doom 1 because I know that bright theme is probably <laughs> hurting some people's eyes. So I'm gonna go back to the Doom 1 color scheme for everything. So it'll change Xmonad and Conky and everything back to the appropriate theme itself. We need to change Doom Emacs, so I'll do space HT, search for Doom 1. And then the only other thing to change is the org level headers. Remember Meta X and then search for org dash colors dash Doom dash 1. And now it changed that back to an appropriate color. Now, as part of these 10 interactive functions for each color scheme for the org level headers, I also added an additional line here, set face attribute org dash table. Org dash table is the font used for your org mode tables. Now, I didn't do anything really interesting with this. This is basically use the standard monospace font, normal weight, normal height. The foreground is a slightly bluish gray color, which is not unusual for that kind of font. So if I actually go up here and show you an org table, let me unfold the entire document so we can see some tables. Here is what an org table currently looks like. Now, of course, because I have that as part of those interactive functions, that org dash table font, if you wanted this to be a bigger size font, you could. If you wanted it to be bold, you could. If you wanted it to be a different font phase, you know, whatever you want to do with this org table font, you can do. And I have seen people online, I haven't played with this myself, but I know people that have configured their org tables to where they have different colors and different font faces for various cells inside their org tables, especially people that are doing things with spreadsheets and things like that. I, I haven't really delved that deeply into some of the more advanced stuff you can do with org tables, so I haven't uh, checked that out. But again, you can do so much with fonts inside Emacs. And if you're looking at code all day, you want something that looks good, that's easy on the eyes, that's attractive, that's going to render all the fonts appropriately. I'm talking about all the various Unicode characters, and if you, or if you use ligatures and things like that. Of course, Emacs handles that stuff beautifully, where if you're using Vim, of course, you're really dependent on the terminal. Does the terminal that you're actually running Vim in, does that handle that stuff? And of course, you know, the more I get into scripting and programming and staring at the screen all day, especially the older I get with my old eyes, right? I have to, I have to think about, do I want to stare at this screen all day? And a lot of times staring at a terminal based text editor like Vim compared to Emacs, it does make a difference, and that is one of the biggest reasons why I'm currently an Emacs user. Uh, for those of you that want some of this code that I worked on this morning as far as these org level headers and the different uh, color schemes and things like that, I'm going to push this config to my dot .files repository. I may eventually incorporate some of this into DTOS, which is kind of why I was adding all of these various color schemes to my config this morning. But I've got a few more things I want to work on before I start adding this to DTOS. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Dustin, Gabe, James, Matt, Maxim, Michael, Mitchell, Paul, Wes, Why You Bald, Homie, Alan, Armor, Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Diokai, Dylan, Marstrom, Erjan, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Steven, Tools, Devler, and Willie, these guys. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this video wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I depend on you guys, the community, to help support my work. Subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. I really wish I knew some more Emacs Lisp. Right now, I'm such a noob.